What if feeling stressed, anxious, and frightened in a stressful, anxiety-inducing, and frightening world isn't a mental illness? What if this is actually normal? What do we do about that? Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. How about we stop medicalizing the human condition? There's a, a fascinating piece in uh, Forbes magazine uh, by Alison Escalante, a, a science contributor, uh, who writes about the science of performance. And she said, she, she opens it with the opening sentence. What if mental disorders like anxiety, depression, or post-traumatic stress disorder are not mental disorders at all? And then she gets into this uh, compelling new paper by, by a couple of biological anthropologists begging the medical community to rethink some of their definitions of mental illness. Now, you know, I... I have uh, participated in this discussion, uh, shall we say, at some length. Back in 1986, I published a, a book called ADD, A Different Perception. Uh, it, it is now out as ADHD, A Hunter in a Farmer's World. And in that book, uh, in a new and updated version, in that book back in 86, in fact, Time Magazine did a story about it, um, I proposed that ADHD, or ADD as it was called back then, is not actually a mental condition, that it is a way of thinking, a, a form of brain organization that is highly adaptive for people in a hunting gathering society and only becomes maladaptive, only becomes a problem, only becomes a quote disorder when a person is in an uh, essentially a farming society. You know, when, when uh, you know, the, a, people with ADD make great uh, hunters, they make great private detectives or police officers or, or uh, journalists, reporters, you know, on the hunt, but they make terrible bookkeepers, you know, just sitting in the same place doing the same thing hour after hour after hour. And, and actually, Alison Escalante mentions that ADHD in this article. Uh, doesn't give me any credit, but, but I, you know, I think I was the first person to actually propose that, and boy, did I take a, you know, a lot of crap for it. Um, had a number of uh, psychiatrists and psychologists attacking me in, in public and in medical journals and whatnot over the years. But I think that, you know, I kind of won out on that. Um, but she's taking it a step beyond that and saying that anxiety, depression, ADHD, um, that all of these are not chemical imbalances or mental illnesses that we need to medicate. These are normal responses to challenges in life. And that if we just medicate our way through them, we don't learn how to respond to these challenges. We don't learn new adaptive mechanisms. We become less resilient over time rather than more resilient. And I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I think, uh, and, and, and she also points out, and, and this, I mean, this keeps getting published, this data, that antidepressants when you compare them to placebos, are indistinguishable. Uh, there, are, there are very few antidepressants that actually perform better than a placebo, than a sugar pill. Um, she points out that anxiety, worry, helps us avoid danger. Uh, for depression, the psychic pain of depression helps us focus attention on adverse effects so as to mitigate the current adversity and avoid future such adversities. Uh, she says ADHD could be a way of functioning that evolved in an ancestral environment. There's my hunter versus farmer theory. And, and, and basically is calling for a reform of society rather than individuals, rather than medicating. Indi now, obviously, there are times when people are just absolutely overwhelmed by anxiety, by depression, um, by other, other conditions, and medication is appropriate, medical intervention is appropriate, certainly therapy is, is appropriate. But there are, there are also times when just talk therapy is the best thing or just, just getting through it, figuring out a way to get through it or, or relying on friends and family um, helps build resilience. And, and I think that this is a conversation that the medical community needs to be having more and in, more in depth. And, and now it's starting to become acceptable to discuss. And a lot of that really started, I think, 
with this whole conversation around ADHD that I started back in the 1980s and became a thing in the 1990s, a big thing. And, uh, you know, and, and now it's moving forward.